This is Gregory Shelton with Historic Living Modern World. I'm back at Dottler Motorcycles with Peter Hogarth. He's got a new shipment of European and British motorcycles that I cannot wait to check out. Stay with us. Peter, how you been, man? Good, how you doing? I'm doing very well, man. What do you, what do you got for us today? Well, a little bit of different stuff here. There, This okay. is the newer stuff, the lot. It's a, All right. it's a BMW R80, All uh, right. fairly low miles, 30,000. It'll go anywhere, a nice original bike. The seat has been recovered. Other than that, it's it's pretty much all stock. Gotcha, and um, I'm, assuming this, I'm assuming this would be a standard Kind of a touring bike for this time, yeah. Then, right? Yeah, Stand, standard cruiser, road okay. bike. Yep. Would uh, when you talk about the size of the bike what, and, and its series, what level from, from the engine perspective would it be? This is probably a mid level. Okay. It's an 800 cc. All right. Uh, and it'll it'll go anywhere. Uh, it handles well. Right. Shaft drive. It's a nice looking bike. It's very, it's very simple. Yep. And classic BMW layout. And it's, um, at the same time, it, it's still 35 years old. It is, it's, uh, it's, it's interesting because I've seen, uh, especially online, a lot of guys are starting to trick out these bikes. You know, yeah. making really tough looking. It, Changing the handlebars. Cafe, look, cafe yeah, exactly. look, single seat and all that yeah, stuff. Yeah, I've even seen them with, with some knobby tires and a whole complete paint job. and. Really, kind of taking it to 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 a new level, you know, making it really rough and. I, I do like the original look, but that's, yeah, it's got a nice that's look just to me. it. There's something about the something about the gas tank on a BMW like this. I know it doesn't have the white piping or whatever, but it's the gold is sharp too. Yep, I'm, I'm, assuming, I'm assuming that's that stock. I, I assume this is original color. This okay. Is, yep. And when you see the fenders, it got yeah the matching gold. pinstripe. Yeah, the gold pinstripe as well. What do you, when you see this bike, and I'm sure you've seen a lot of them come in because again, this is this is a standard European bike. What's the best? What's what gives you the best ex, you know expression when you ride this type of thing? Is this just something that you, you respect the there's, there's the some, engine, or is it the the balance, or it it? And this is a good size 800 cc. It doesn't okay. it doesn't vibrate too much. Gotcha. It'll go anywhere. It's good on gas. It's got good brakes, and it's. Uh, it's pretty maintenance free. There's not much to do, no chain, doesn't leak, um, runs forever. Okay. What, do you, what do you think top speed is on this thing? Probably not that, maybe 100, 110. Okay. Not, not that you need to go much faster than no. a touring bike like this. But, but it, anyway, it, it's not built for speed, it's just built for cruising. Right. And touring, right? So and you touring, can take yep. it across the United States. And it, it's set up, well, this one doesn't have the bag uh, on it, but it, it's. Yeah. You can put the saddlebags on here. Right. You can put a tank back, and um, a lot of people go long distance on these. Is, um, is looking at uh, at the fuel tank here? Is this cap standard for this year? Is this yep. is this one of the early years they started using this type? This is actually this is they started this in uh, I think '76. They came okay. with this style. This is so you can put a tank bag on so it's flush. Ah, gotcha. Instead of the, instead of up. the cap sticking up, yeah. So this this is flush. And it's loggable. Okay. And, um, well, nice. Yep. It's a really nice, solid bike. I love it. It's um, it, it's sharp and it it retains that simplicity that BMW uh, to me kind of owns, really. Absolutely. Really nice. And of course, it's if you wanted to have someone on the back, you could easily do it. It's, it's something that oh, would yeah, stand that, up for. Oh yeah, it's comfortable for for two up. Right. So this is the original seat, but it was recovered. It was recovered. Yeah. Nicely done, though. I mean, it's a yep. nice. You can see it's. It looks great. I think it's. I think that's a great bike for someone who's looking to have maybe a, maybe an entry level BMW uh, from a classic perspective. Take a bike to, to work. You know, every day it's good on gas, okay. reliable, go anywhere. Nice, very cool. I love it. I love it. What's next? Well, next is a. Oh man, it's a 1947 Matchless. First, okay. first pre-war model uh, was restored about 30 years ago. Okay. Bought it from an older gentleman out in Oregon and he's had the bike for probably 50 years okay uh, very reliable it's 
got a this really beautiful restored, look. Very, very close to original. Okay. Um, in 47, they made two models. They made a 350 and they made a 500. And this is a 500, they all iron engine. Okay. Um, and uh, Magneto and... Wow. Yep. Rigid, kind of a tough ride, but they were reliable. And it's a 500 single. Okay. It's what they call the big thumper. It was pre okay. pretty much the biggest single cylinder they had at that time. Okay. And they were reliable. They were, they had sidecars on them. Okay. They rode two up and, you know, people would go on vacations on these with a sidecar and, wow. and, and kits and stuff. And um, back then, a lot of people didn't have cars, especially in Europe. Matzus was AMC, Associated Motorcycles. Okay. They also owned AJS. Uh, they later owned Norton, Villiers. Um, they were a big concern in the 1950s and early 60s before they were not a business. Okay. Um, and I know you had a couple AJSs here before, and yeah. the last time we did a video. Uh, yeah, I know, you know Matzus is a very, very British, you know, London brand, which Yep. From a look perspective, you don't see a lot of them. They're pretty rare, at least from, from what I've seen. So finding, I, I know you want to like original, but uh, this is this is restored beautifully. Uh, it's got a lot of style, and um, many of the people that watch our show know I'm a big Bellstaff fan. And and to me, I, I know that the um, the Melanotis who bought Bellstaff, uh, probably I think in the, in the mid '90s. Um, they end up selling Bellstaff and then moving and they end up buying the brand Matchless. So they, they have lines of, of um, wax cotton and leather jackets that they've moved to that brand. So it's very, very cool. I, I think this is really, if, if you're looking for a restored bike, this to me is really, really sharp. It's this something you would really never... Nice. And, and it, it, yeah. would, it would, you know, you could ride that year round and okay. it, it's a great bike. It, it, now is this, is this back seat original? Uh, well, it's, uh, that, that's how it would come from the factory. This, okay. this has been redone. Okay. But it's, this is uh, called a pillion seat. Uh, it was cheaper by, than buying a regular seat. Okay. And, okay. You know, back then, price was everything because after the war, there wasn't a lot of money around. Right. So they had to make them as but cheap as possible. still got your little seats if you even got want to put your little, pegs, Absolutely, yep. if you really yep. want to sit it out there. And this here has the, it has a, the rear stand, not the center stand. So you'd actually put put the bike up on the rear stand, and and would it be laying like that? No, it, it, it's uh, let me, let me show you. It's, okay, it's actually that's different. Is that is that a matchless thing or is no, that a? Th most of the British bikes had this. Uh, yep. Yeah, but, but see, then it's, it's okay. It's, and this way, cool. you could, you could change your rear wheel if you had a flat tire. Yeah, absolutely, that's great. And same thing with the with the front stay. This front stay loosens up and it swings down and you can actually put up on that stand oh, wow, and change okay. your front tire. Nice, especially if you're on the road. Because in the 40s and 50s, they had a lot of dirt roads, right. flat tires, rubber wasn't as good. And this is, might be the only transportation a kid had. That's what they had. And, well, kid, parents, I mean, grown-ups. I noticed that these, some bikes have these, some bikes do not. Knee pads, yeah. Is that standard for this bike? Yep. Okay. Yep. I can see the Matchless logo on it, which is... <laughs> Most again, would have cool. them because, especially in the wintertime, they would have, when they rode the bikes, they would have a cover over here too, so it would protect the... Ah, uh, gotcha. Uh, the paint on the tank and stuff. Scratching or... Yep. And a lot of times too, they would put protectors over the handlebars too, so you wouldn't freeze your hands. Oh, I bet. It's chilly. Yep. Smith Gage, right? Very Smith, synonymous yep. for British bikes. And Lu Lucas M. Gage. This is this is done right. And as far as the paint, this is standard black. This is standard black. That's all you could get the colors back right after the war. Gotcha. This is a to me. This is a stunning bike. It it, it covers a lot of different and levels. See, see how small me. the tail light is. Oh wow! It's a very small tail light. Very nice. Love this, absolutely love this bike. Love this bike. What's next? Next is Triumph. The, this is actually my daily rider. Okay. I've had this bike well over 10, 15 years now. Okay. It's unrestored. It's a 1970 Bonneville. All right. And um, 
I don't write it as often as I like to, but it, it'll start right up and it'll go anywhere. And I, I just like the fact that it's unrestored. Great running bike. I've seen you, I've seen you out on this before. I've seen you ride this a lot, which is cool. Yep, and it, it's got a little bit of patina here and there, but yeah, it, it's still in great shape. So I'm assuming from an oil and frame perspective, that would be the year after this? Oil and the frame started in 71, yes, yep. that's correct. So this is 70, this the is- Complete shift. This in... is the last year of the- Right. The classic Triumph, if you will. Gotcha. Yep. And was Triumph and BSA owned together at this, at this age? Actually, uh, BSA bought Triumph in 1951. Okay. So they owned Triumph then, and they, they used some common parts. They, they used the same gauges, they used the same headlights. Uh, yeah, standard Lucas, right? I mean, it's all yep. Lucas Smith stuff. I noticed you got the updated front brake, which is a, a good yeah, the feature. the twin leading brake. Yep, yep so that, you that's actually a have a good brake. brake here. They used the same carburetors. They, they used a lot of the same, as many parts as they could. Right. It's a nice looking bike. I actually like the patina on it. It's, it's, yeah, it's, it's a I, I, I love unrestored. And this is a this is an American version, right? So this yeah, it's is a got the, the small high bars, the small tank, right? Yeah, and um, chrome headlight and stuff. Where the Europeans they had the bigger tank and lower bars, and not as much chrome, a little more paint. Right. It's a very cool bike. I'm sure this, I can see why you like this bike. And I've seen some variations of this in, in your in your shop, but I can tell why this tends to be the one that you yeah. that you keep running and, and going, which is really great. What is it about, um, I know you've been a Triumph fan for a long time, what is it about that brand that makes you well, always come back to it? 650 puts a smile on your face, Okay. it handles well, it's popular, and uh, it's a good motor. And if I'm not mistaken, uh, you know, Evil Knievel started on the bottom, though, did he not? Yeah, he started on Triumph, then he went to American Eagle, and then he went to Holly Davidson. Gotcha. Yep. It's a heavy bike to jump, right? And for, to, to be a to be yeah. jumping pretty, pretty to, far. To I know the Harley was heavy, right? Oh yeah. But original seat? Original seat, yep. That's a nice seat for a stock seat. It has a little, little bit of damage here, but it's... But now it's a good, yeah, good no, looking no, no bike. Big deal. All right, what's next? I see a Nimbus here. Next is a 1936 Nimbus, unrestored. Nimbus, it's a Danish motorcycle. Imagine that, he's from Denmark and he has a, Dan a Danish motorcycle. Yes. This is like a have to have. It's four cylinder, overhead cam 750. Okay. Shaft drive, pressed steel frame. Nimbus made close to 14,000 bikes. Okay. And they, of any bike brand out there, they retain the highest number on the road to this day. Percentage, really? percentage wise. Wow. And this is back Nimbus, they came with telescopic front fork in 1934, before anybody else. Okay. Um, and this is a standard, this is, this is not a speed thing, obviously. This no, is a transportation. No. This standard is, utilitarian. The top speed is probably 65, 70. Okay. And they, a lot of them, they had sidecars. Right. And they were, they actually, in some ways, they were pretty, your headlight is, is in the handlebars, that's how you, Okay. Turn your headlights on and off. And um, everything was simple. What do we got here? This is actually a hand shift. Okay. Uh, and they got a foot clutch. That changed, I think, in 38, where the foot shift became standard. All right. But this is um, back in the 20s and early 30s. A lot of bikes had a hand shift. Right. Foot shift is more convenient, and um, so everybody went to foot shift later on. I have to ask you, so um, but not besides the fact that you're you're Danish yourself, who, who would be someone who would who would want to have this bike? Who would want to buy this from you, for well, a customer? People that want something a little bit different, okay, and and something that's very reliable. You can still get parts for everything. Really, you can get okay. anything for it. They reproduce all the parts. Um, and, uh, you know, of course, they got to come from Denmark, but you can get pretty much anything for it. And um, they nice. great running bikes. They call this model the Bumblebee because the motor, the sound, that four-cylinder. Okay. Almost sounds like a Bumblebee. Do the pistons go back and forth like the, all the other? Is, is that what's happening here, too, or no? Well, it's, uh, they have almost like a car engine. Okay. And they got exposed valves. Yes. So the valve, yeah. You, you can see the valves going up and down, yep. Yeah, it's cool. Yep. Very, very cool. 
It's yep. great. I, I think I know you had a blue one for a good amount of time. Yeah, you know, the sidecar, if I'm not mistaken. Yep. Um, great bike. Very cool. Uh, I actually have, I have bought it. Piece. I have another one that's still in Denmark. I haven't brought over yet, but with a sidecar also. So that'll be show up one day. So I kind I have to be honest. I mean, this this back seat, this pillion seat. Looks kind of comfortable, although you're, you're actually back a little bit. You have a little control over it, right? Well, so you, you can actually hold it. Control and hold on here. You don't have yep. to grab onto the passenger and stuff yet. Right. That's, I mean, it's pretty remarkable the way they thought through a lot of the things for this bike, even at its age. Yep. Very, very and cool. And Nimbus, they also, they made a, their primar primary business making vacuum cleaners. Really? Neil Nimbus. Fisk. And they, they still in business today making vacuum cleaners. And what was the last uh, Nimbus motorcycle that left the line? 1959. Okay. So not, they, they went pretty a long time, right? I mean, it was, yeah. It's a but good, they, good they amount of time. They became cost prohibitive. I mean, they, they weren't... They didn't a lot have, of metal. Yeah. And they weren't selling enough to, to justify it. Primarily for Denmark, the police had it. The Danish Postal Service had it. Okay. Uh, the army had some. I'm assuming that when 59, you got a BSA in Triumph that, you could, that you're competing against. Yeah. BMW. BMW, BSA, Triumph. The younger Triumph, kids yeah. are more... Yeah. And I have to say, that these handle, this is a bizarre experience yeah, here. but it, it, it's pressed steel and it, yeah. it's um, everything is kind of integrated. I can imagine if you lived at the beach or if you lived in a small neighborhood, this could be something reliable. It could go back and forth to wherever you needed to be, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. Really, really nice. It would go anywhere. And I and I I'm, have to check out this. This uh, it feels like maybe BSA stole that uh, for the for their triple because I know that 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 exhaust looks pretty interesting the way it tapers in. You know, yeah, right? very cool. All right, what's next? Well, Why don't we go over here? Next over here is a, <laughs> a little Greaves twin. A Greaves. Tell Greaves. me about Greaves. Well, Greaves was a he was a British guy, and uh, he made. Mostly dirt bikes, but also, like this one here, made some road bikes. Okay. Uh, he started in the early 60s and continued up till, I believe, 71, 72. Okay. So and very very rare bike then. Guess, very right? rare yeah. bike, yeah. And especially in the U.S., you didn't see many over here. They had quite a few of their own designs. The front fork, for okay. one. And... Um, With a uh, fiberglass tank? Uh, no? Oh, it's metal, well, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, that, that is that is fiberglass. Okay. But some of the most of them were steel though. Okay. They didn't make that many road models, but this one here is this is actually this is gonna go back to England. And what year was this again? Uh, I believe this is a 64, 65. Okay. I get like a nacelle kind of front headlight, right? Yeah, yeah, it's yep, cool. built in, yep. Yeah, it's very nice. This and is the, another transportation bike. Very small, inexpe small. very inexpensive bike. Uh, reliable, right. not not a speed bike or anything, right? Uh, by no means, but people use them for work and uh, inexpensive, and they, they could ride two up on them too. Okay, is um and, and when they tried to compare to the BSA's Triumphs of, the, of that time frame, did that put a hurting on that company, or is it just something that they had their own niche and they were fine? They, they kind of had their own niche. Okay, and they, they this is uh, I believe this is a 250. They okay, made, they made some 350s. And uh, they kind of had their own following. Okay. I'm, I'm assuming that this could easily be a woman's bike too. If they, if they oh yeah. I mean, yep. It's a little bit smaller, lighter, yep. right? It's, it's manageable. Easy maneuverable. handling. Yeah. Yeah. Could be a very, very nice bike for someone. Old school drum brakes on her, right? Yep. Yep. Oh yeah. And uh, you know, you'd have to mix twin. the gas with oil because okay. it's two stroke. Um, very cool. That's a cool bike. Very nice. All right, so what do we got next to us? Because this BMW looks really, really great. This is a one owner. Okay. R69S, 1968. And it's Dover white, which is a rare color. Okay. And Boy, what a beautiful bike that uh, is. Damn. And this thing only has 24,000 miles on it. All original? All original. And also, it came with a Stipe sidecar in Dover white. Okay. It's so original Stipe LS sidecar. This is the small sidecar. Right. That's a very rare combination, uh, a Dover white. So, we know this is a, a beautiful sidecar. Obviously, it needs a little bit of work. But look, the, but the first thing caught my eye is the work that's here. 
That's un, un you, you can't reproduce that. That's no. amazing. And has a you, you know very nice steel fender. I know it's a little rough. It's been sitting for 25 years, but this bike was sold with this sidecar, and it's still a one owner. Wow. It's a super rare color. It's gonna need some new seats, but still very rare combination. The first right. time I've ever seen a Dover white. This is the smallest type sidecar type. They made different sizes. This is the LS, then they had two or three bigger ones. Uh, but this is a great sidecar, fits an adult comfortably. Right. Uh, has extra storage room, has everything ready to hook it up. When you look at the bikes that you have here, of course this is a very, very small assortment of the bikes that you've collected and picked up not that long ago. Um, you got several different brands. I know you tend to be a BMW guy. What bike, what bike that you look at at the ones you have here that kind of catches your eyes and you kind of really, really love this? Well, it's, it's got to come down to either the BMW or the Nimbus. Okay. It's um, maybe Nimbus because I'm Danish, I don't know. <laughs> but then again, I, I like the Mattress, I like the Bonneville. They all have their own charm. Right. And you know, it's what you get used to. Right, and I think the thing that's awesome about it, at least for, for people that are collecting antique or vintage bikes, you rarely ever stay with one brand. The idea is that you're going with different brands, there's different experiences, and you have different sound, different handling, and when you're gonna restore it, uh, you restore it to what it was at that time. Yep. Very cool. I have to be. I have to be honest. When I look at the bikes, I love the BMW, but I have to tell you that Matchless has so much style. It has that World War II look, of course, but it's got a lot of style, even though it's it's all been redone. But it's a be it's such a beautiful bike, and yeah. uh, I can see myself riding that. By the way, very very nice. Well, listen, man, I really appreciate it. As always, what's the next for uh, what's next for Dollar Motorcycles? Looking at buying some more big lots. Okay. And um, I'm sure there'll be more new bikes in a few months. Are you, uh, fr from what you're doing, are you looking for people that are looking to get rid of motorcycles? Are you looking to always always, sell? always looking okay. to buy anything, I'd say from 1980 and down. If you love the bikes you saw today, you could easily pick up one of them or pick up the amazing amount of parts that he has by calling the number below. Peter, I really appreciate it, man. Thank hey, you very much. Nice seeing you. As always, and we'll be back again to see what you have in the future. If you enjoyed what you saw today, click like and subscribe, and make sure you follow us on Facebook and Instagram. This is Gregory Shelton from Historic Living Modern World, reminding you, whenever you try to do something, always make sure you work to move people. Cheers.